Bird into the forecourt. Backfield, they move Rosalina in motion. They get late, 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 night. in the tank is a business making a killing. Hi Sharks, I'm Lex Herb, founder and CEO of Boa Daddy. I'm asking for $60,000 for a 13 per stake in my company, Poet Daddy. At Poet Daddy, we focus on undervalued and highly talented poets. We've done no sales and have no record of success you can count on my word and my talented poets. Do you have samples? Of course. Today, I will provide two examples of highly talented poets that I believe deserve more national attention. My first poet is Massachusetts native Stanley Kunitz. Kunitz was a contemporary poet born on July 29, 1905 in Worcester, Massachusetts. He was born into a Jewish immigrant family with both parents being of Jewish, Russian, Lithuanian descent. His childhood was overshadowed by the death of his father, who committed suicide in a public park just six weeks before he was born. The poem, End of Summer, evokes the event. Quote, Bolt upright in my bed that night, I saw my father flying. The wind was walking on my neck. The window panes were crying. Despite an inadequate childhood, Kunitz showed academic promise from birth, graduating from Worcester Classical High School as valedictorian and earning a scholarship to Harvard. He majored in English and got a philosophy minor. He gained a master's degree in English the following year. When Kunitz was informed that he wouldn't be able to teach his alma mater, Harvard, due to his Jewish background, he shunned academia and found other forms of work, such as working in a printing press. Kunitz would be drafted into the United States Army, but maintained his status as a conscientious objector. At the age of 30, Kunitz published his first book of poems titled Intellectual Things. Kunitz's early poems reflect an opaque style, influenced by English metaphysicist poems John Doan and George Herbert. Free verse and narrative poems are common styles written by Kunitz. After building up a substantial poetry arsenal, highlighted by awards such as the National Book Award for Poetry in 1995, the Bellingen Prize for Lifetime Achievement in Poetry, and Harvard Centennial Medal, he was awarded the United States po Poet Laureate in 2000. Kunitz died in 2004 in New York City at the age of 99 years old. Woo! Wow. wow. Poet. Oh, daddy. My next poet is contemporary poet Nikki Giovanni. Originally born in the Knoxville, Tennessee area as Yolan Coriliana Giovanni Jr., Giovanni and her family bounced around Cincinnati until finally settling in a northern suburb. The nickname Nikki came sometime in her early three years when her older sister started calling her Nikki. After graduating high school, she attended Fisk University in Nashville. The conservative nature and disagreements with Dean of Women would leave Giovanni to be expelled in 1961. After the Dean of Women was replaced, Giovanni would re-enroll in HBCU. She majored in history, but took writer workshops with writer-in-residence John Oliver Killens. When Giovanni's grandmother died on March 8, 1967, Giovanni turned to poetry as a form of refuge and wrote what makes up most of her first volume of poetry, Black Feelings, Black Talk. Heavily influenced by the civil rights movement and key historical figures such as Martin Luther King Jr. and especially Rosa Parks, much of Giovanni's po poetry focuses on the issues of race and gender. Other influences came from her grandmother, who experienced racial issues her whole life, and John Oliver Kittlins, whom Giovanni studied under in college. Giovanni's work would be recognized by, by awards such as the inaugural Rosa L. Parks Women of Courage Award, the American Book Award, and the Langston News Award. She was a seven-time recipient of the NAACP Image Award. Poems such as Nikki Rosa and The Women Gather provide insight into the influences and struggles of the poet. Living through the civil rights movement, Giovanni focuses heavily on the stereotypes placed on black children and adults. She also focuses on how the African-American community comes so close in times of trials and turbulence. As she says in poem Nikki Rosa, and I really hope no white person ever has cause to write about me, because they'll never understand. Black love is black wealth, and they'll probably talk about my hard childhood, and they'll never understand all the while I was quite happy. 
The quote, black love is black wealth, would become one of her most famous and captures a lot of the points she tries to focus on throughout her poetry. Her poem, Bay Leaves, is part of her latest poetry book titled April 2023. Bay Leaves features Giovanni looking back on her time cooking with her grandmother and mother, but if you look past the various spices, ingredients, and cooking techniques, you'll see a poet reflecting on her childhood and lessons learned, not only in the kitchen, but also in life. A nostalgic tone and an underlying theme of embracing every moment in life, this free verse poem has the reader reflect on their own past experiences and go into new, new ones with a fresh mindset. Figurative language in this poem is abundant, with numerous examples of figurative language such as imagery and repetition. Giovanni's use of these literary devices elevates her writing to the next level. I'd be happy to recite a poem for you guys now. 100,000 for 50%. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start the bidding there. I don't think I can do that. $50,000 for 15% if you can raise the rest from Lori and if she wants to do business with you. I think we have a deal. Next into the tank is a way to take content creation to the next level. Hello Sharks, let me introduce you to my new poetry company, Squatty Poetry. The first product I'd like to show you is our analysis of Billy Collins, born in 1941 and former U.S. Poet Laureate. During his time as the U.S. Poet Laureate, he was asked to write a poem commemorating the first anniversary of 9-11. He would title this poem, The Names. He also saw how humans were becoming disconnected with nature because of the rise of technology resulting in the poem, The Birds of America. Billy Collins worked to push poetry back into the mainstream of modern society. He wrote, Introduction to Poetry. This poem touches on the nature of poetry and how the author believes it should be appreciated. Poetry is different from other subjects in that it does not always have a straight answer. Its theme is the appreciation of poetry. Quote, I want them to water ski across the surface of a poem, waving at the author's name on the shore. End quote. The author uses an ironic tone to satirize the modern sensibility to interpret poetry. Quote, tie the poem to a chair with a rope and torture a confession out of it. Quote, like a color slide for a projector, end quote. It also uses personification, which is when an animate objects are given human qualities, when it talks about tying a poem up and torturing. The same stanza about torturing a poem is hyperbole for exaggerated statements or claims. This poem is written in free verse. What? This poem is written in free verse from a first person perspective, point of view, which makes it a lyrical poem or a poem musically inclined, short verse that makes it poignant and powerful. Ooh, you know what? Dumbest you marketing know move ever. I'm out. That's it? Seriously. That's, that's Seriously. Uh, you gotta read the room. Okay, well, I see you all aren't very interested in that one, but I bet you guys will love this one. Here we have a revolutionary poet, Rita Dove from Akron, Ohio. She's a graduate of Miami University of Ohio and the first African-American poet laureate of the United States. Her biggest inspirations come from the political and, so and social civil rights movement of the 1960s. She has impacted the world by increasing public awareness of poetry and the benefits of literature, as well as bringing awareness to social issues through her activism. If you give me $8 million, I'll give you a 50% stake, and if you accept this offer today, I will personally give you a live recital of one poem. 150,000 for 25%. I'll make you a millionaire within a year. Deal. This is a landmark deal. I'm really happy to be working with her. Next up is a better version of an often neglected household item. Well, 
Whale Sharks. My name is Gerald Bradleton II, and I'm seeking $40,000 for 20% of my company, Next Gen Poetry. Now, Sharks, we aren't just any poetry website or company. We introduce students to poets like Philip Levine, who I'm sure you heard of. This is going to end so badly. No. Well, he was one of the best poets of his generation who was born in Detroit, Michigan. He was fascinated by the Great Depression of 1930 and the Spanish Civil War. He wanted to give a voice to the voiceless, so his work was often about the working class and the struggles they had to go to, through. He looked up to writers like John Berryman and Vior Winters and paid tribute to Berryman for helping him develop his writing style. He used a rhythmic narrative writing style and was known for his concernment with the known visible world, similar to a writer like Maya Angelou. If you haven't heard of her, then you're missing out. She was a talented African-American writer who worked alongside people like Martin Luther King Jr. and Malcolm X. She wrote about African-American struggles through a direct writing, through a direct narrative writing style as if she was talking to you in person. These topics led her to write a poem called Cage Bird that goes, that goes like this. She talked about a cage and a free bird, the free one flying around without a care in the world and the cage bird tied up as it sings, hoping for freedom. She is talking about freedom versus captivity in this poem, which is a common theme in this poem. The poem softens your heart with a nice tone as it talks about a free bird flying around without a care, and but crushes everything when it talks about the cage bird and its struggles. She wrote this in a free verse poem writing style. And this is a great choice as she was really able to keep the audience's attention. Through teachings like these, we teach our students to find themselves and express it through writing. And with your help, you could give students the opportunity to express themselves through writing. The 500,000, 6%. No royalty. Deal. This has got well done. Woo! Good job, Jason. Yes. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, my God. I just got the deal of a lifetime.